Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater, greater than all, and no one can take them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. And dear brothers and sisters, this is probably the shortest gospel or one of the shortest gospels in the entire litur liturgical year, but that doesn't mean that the homily is going to be short because it's very dense and it's so many, so many important words that we have that this gospel deserves a very good explanation. And especially it's because it's the gospel of John, the gospel of the gospels, the best of the four gospels because it's the one that gives the final meaning, the deep meaning to all the Gospels, to the life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we see in this Gospel that everything is grace. And everything is grace because we have a shepherd. And I grew up in the, in, in the agriculture industry, and I helped many shepherds when I was, when, when I was a young kid. And one, one of the things that I learned that sheep are dumb. And sheep are dumb because they get in trouble a lot. And if they don't have a good shepherd to, follow, to, to help them, to lead them, they die. They die because there are coyotes, wolves, and snakes. And they have a difficult time to find good pastures. So they need a shepherd in order for them to go to where they need to go and to find life through the feet, through the pastures. And in a, in a, in a way, we're the same, including myself. And we need a shepherd, and we need to follow his voice. We need to follow his voice because sometimes what we see in the world is not true, beautiful, and just. And what the world sometimes offers to us is the opposite. And it brings us not to eternal life, not to life right now, but the opposite. It brings us to condemnation and you bring us to sufferings. And sometimes I was being re I've been reflecting a lot, especially in the seminary, about what Jesus Christ means when he says he gave us eternal life. And he gave us life within us right now. Because we see so many people that we are, we are all alive. We are all alive. So what does it mean that he gave us life within us? Because we go outside and we meet someone that never has been in church and he's alive. You can touch him and he can respond to you. He's not like a walking dead or a, or a zombie. But having life means also having quality of life, being happy, having a purpose in your life, have this meaning. And this is something that the, our society right now, the Western society, is looking for. Is looking for a meaning in his life. And that's why we see so many ideologies around we see the gender ideology, we see ideologies in, po in politics, and all these ideologies are trying to find a meaning of, of, the, of life because we have loved the meaning. We live in a society that is not a Christian society anymore, but it's a post we live in the post-Christianity society. So we don't have a, something to aim for goodness, for beautiful, and for truth because Jesus Christ He's not our king anymore. And sometimes we see that within ourselves. Sometimes we see that we want to do good, that we strive to be in grace, that we strive to be, have this personal relationship with God. But at the same time, we acknowledge that sin overwhelms us, that sin sometimes is greater than our own will, and that it is very difficult for us to have this relationship with God and to follow his voice. Because by being in mortal sin, we have a difficult time following his voice because we just hear noise. And we hear noise 
that come from temptation and that come from this world. And that's the importance about confession, about acknowledging our sins, acknowledging acknowledge that we need God to forgive our sins and to help us. And maybe we got a confession and we sin the same and we we confess the same sins over and over every month, every week, every two or every every two every two months, every three months, we confess the same thing over and over and we say, Is it is it worth it? Is it worth it to go through this every time? Yes, absolutely. You bet it's worth it. And it's worth it because maybe on the short time you don't notice. But on the long term, God is changing us. God is making us holiest because only through his effort, only through his will, we will change. Because everything is grace if we follow the voice of our shepherd. And it's very difficult. We see in this world that we we don't acknowledge between what is good and what is evil. You can decide what is good and what is evil on your own. You can decide what is real and what is fake. And it's become a subjective deal. But society cannot surrender to this type of thinking. I love swimming. I, I was a good swimmer myself before I, I gained some weight and I grew a little bit older. But once in a while, once in a while I like to watch a swimming competition. And the last competition I watched, it was a swimming competition in a college. And there were like a woman in a pool. But there were a woman in a pool and there was a guy in the pool with them comp- competing. And this guy, he, we need to be very merciful to this guy. But this guy had a problem. He thought he was a woman. And he had long hair. And this is a very difficult thing to say, but it is, it's not right. It's not according to reality. God made us men and women, and he made us good. And by acknowledging that we want to be something different than ourselves, we're saying that God didn't create us right, that he's not perfect, and he is perfect. Yes, we need to be very merciful with this person. Yes, we need to be very comprehensive. We need to listen to it. Like we need to listen to our own problems. But we need to acknowledge God's voice when God tells us that something is wrong. But I think watching this competition, I was the only one who acknowledged that everything was wrong. And I, acknowledged, and I think that I, I was the only one because he was in the pool. And everybody else thought that it was normal. So when you surrender your mind, when you surrender your reflective thinking to what media tells you that is true, when you surrender your freedom, your freedom of choosing good and avoiding evil, you are surrendering to our shepherd, and you are a lost sheep, and you are not going to find the good pastures, and you are not going to find what it fulfills you in life. Because Jesus Christ is the truth, and he's the only one who can show us the right path for eternal life, and the right path to have life within us right now. Because when we surrender our mind, when we surrender our freedom to choose good, we surrender ourselves to what the world wants us to tell what to do, and we won't find happiness in ourselves. And we can see that in so many people. Like, there's so many drugs right now that they didn't exist 20 years ago. There's so many difficulties in society. And sometimes we can see ourselves, we can see this big battle. And it's very difficult. It's very difficult to listen to our shepherd right now. And that's why we need these, these moments of prayers, these moments of silence. We need to leave the sacraments. We need to come to confession. We need to come to receive the Holy Eucharist in a state of grace. Because by receiving the body of Christ, by receiving his flesh, there is true food. Because Christ, he's present. He is present like I'm talking to you right now. And he is present like you are there right now. And yes, it's a miracle. And it is a miracle. But by receiving Holy Communion in a state of grace, we're receiving the food that gives us, that give, that give us happiness, that gives us eternal happiness in true life. And if we don't receive communion, we won't live. We will be like walking dead or like zombies. And instead of following our conscience, 
instead of choosing with our own freedom to do good that will fulfill us, we will just choose what the world is offering us. And trust me, my brothers and sisters, what the world is offering us doesn't come from God. It comes from the, queen, the king of this world, and the king of this world, we know who he is, is the devil. So my brothers and sisters, let us pray to the Lord that we can surrender ourselves to God and not to this world, that we can follow the voice of our shepherd, and in that way, by following his voice, by leaving the sacraments, and by giving ourselves to him for love, we can truly say that everything is grace. And everything is grace because with our Lord, there is no more problems. Yes, we have problems in life. We have difficulties. We will get sick. Eventually, one day we'll die. But if we incorporate Jesus Christ in our life, in all these aspects of our life, not only on Sunday, but in all these aspects of our life, everything is grace. Because we will leave all these difficulties that we will have if we leave the church and never come back. Because if we go to find happiness in other places, we're still going to have this problem. And they won't be solved. But if we leave all these problems, all these difficulties, all these challenges, all these doubts, and all the good things also with Christ, we can truly say everything is grace. Because we are being saved by our Lord every time we, we, we receive Holy Communion in grace. We are being saved by our Lord when we hear our, His voice. And with our own freedom, we choose to do good and we avoid to do evil. And within our freedom, we acknowledge when we have done wrong and we go to confession and ask for forgiveness. Because then we will have truly happiness, true, truly life, and we will be alive right now and in the moment that we have to go to heaven. So let us pray to the Lord that this week we can hear his voice and follow him to new pastures. Amen.